Hi, my name is Paul Haas, and this is my talk on advanced format string attacks. Go, Paul A. Um, a little bit of background. Um, contents of this are going to be a little bit of background on me, um, an abstract of what format strings are, how you exploit them, a definition of sort of the, um, the way in which C functions are made vulnerable to it, um, context in terms of old, current, and new um, attacks. Um, I'm going to show you my new, um, new techniques for exploiting them and actually go through a couple of demos um, before actually showing you a couple of um, you know, full exploits, um, you know, popping, popping root shells without doing any work. Um, then I'm going to show you my tools, how I do it, um, finally leading to you know, a conclusion and Q&A. So I work for Redspin um, Incorporated as the lead web um, application security engineer. This talk isn't associated with that at all, just for fun and uh, you know, because I like doing some binary analysis type of stuff. Um, I'm a former CTF champion here at DEF CON, so you know, hopefully I know what I'm talking about. Uh, you guys will make a decision for me. And for those of you who don't play Mario Kart apparently, it's all about robot and tank on Rainbow Road. So the purpose of this talk is to take a vulnerable program like this, get a shell without doing any of this. So a little bit of beef, brief background, format string attacks, for those who don't know, or a vulnerability in a type of C function, uh, printf type functions that basically can lead to shell code executed. Um, even though it's been sort of resolved, um, ignorance and vulnerability still exist. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about it. Um, you know, it's especially common in academic exercises, um, CTFs, a lot of legacy pen tests. Um, the reason I brought this up is actually because one of our clients had this issue and I didn't feel like doing any additional work on it. So I created a tool to exploit it for me. Um, you know, this name of the talk is Advanced Format String Attacks, so I assume you know a little bit about what format string attacks actually do and how they work. Um, thankfully, the tools I'm going to be talking about don't require any knowledge. They're pretty much point and click, as, as you'll see. Brief history, uh, format string attacks have been around for about 20 years, um, sort of re reaching the apex around 2000 for you know, being popular, being really well known. Um, the last um, format string attack that I've, that I've seen has been um, 2010, so you know, they still all are, are around, as you can, as you can see. Um, the old technique um, used to be really kind of a pain to create. It required a, a long string of doing these manual popping using, you know, a percent %x, percent %p, um, in order to sort of get to your interesting data on the stack. Um, often when you want to actually create the exploit, you have to use a variety of other tools, um, you know, look, through, look for shellcode in your core um, after a seg fault. Um, basically, you know, it's a lot of having to, you know, read the manual, you know, consult the document, you know, and then once you wrote it for one, you know, program, you couldn't take that work and then bring it anywhere else, so. You know, the current has improved a little bit on this, but not much. Um, it's still sort of the same technique. Um, you know, some of the advances have been direct parameter access. So rather than having, rather than having to pop, say, 10 things off the stack, you can just reference the 10th parameter directly. Um, but again, you still needed to sort of use external tools to access, you know, where you want to actually overwrite your code for. The technique, technique that I've been working on basically utilizes the information that because you're dumping the stack and the stack of most programs, C programs, has interesting information in it, you can use this information to basically leverage piece by piece of exploit leading to the eventual you know, compromise of the application. For example, most stacks contain data, uh, code addresses, you know, addresses that point to code 
as well addresses to point to other information on the stack, such as you know data pointers or code pointers. Um, and what's also interesting is that the string that we pass for a format string attack is also on the stack, so we can locate that as well as its, as well as its, as well as its offset. And with this information, we basically can locate the address of anything on the stack, which is useful, for example, if we find a code pointer that we want to overwrite on the stack, we can know, find out the address of that um, pointer and then overwrite it with our format string attack. So here's the vulnerable code that I've been using. Um, obviously, it's not going to work in secure environments, but um, you know, you still see a lot of a lot of this, you know, bits and pieces here and there. So, you know, I wouldn't be expected, you know, I would be pretty expected to see it in, you know, a couple of pen tests that I've been doing for legacy applications. Um, let's talk about a, lo a little bit about the exploit steps for my new method. I first dump the stack um, using, you know, an exploit string until I find that exploit string on the stack. I then find the address of that, um, off that format string address on the stack. Then by finding the physical location and the pointer to that location, I basically can calculate the address of any other stack pointer or stack um, you know, data that's present in my dump. Um, this basically allows me, if I find any you know, code pointers or return addresses, to say I can overwrite that address to point back to my shell code, which is also on the stack. Um, one note with this is because I'm sort of leveraging multiple executions of a program to drive this information, um, it's really helpful to keep the format string length constant because if you change it around, so do stack values and stack addresses. And since you need that information to be relatively constant, it helps to basically just keep the same, same format string length across all these different runs as I'll show you. The first, um, first thing you have to do, stack dumps, um, two methods. One, you just dump you know, the whole stack at once using um, you know, a, a bunch of percent P's or percent X's. Um, second method is to execute a loop with you know, incrementing values. Um, in this case, I have here just a little bash script. Um, I'll show you a demo of this. that that does it and makes it really convenient to show what's on the data or what's on the stack. Um, you then take this stack information, which is um, based on percent %p or percent %x is going to be code pointers, and you actually want to convert it to the you know, string representation of that data. By doing that, you basically can find the, the actual string that's located through those pointers. Um, and then by doing that, you can find the offset of that string from the stack dump. So right here I have a you know, decently long um, one-liner for bash. Um, this is basically running um, our vulnerable print f function. So basically this, func this function when you pass it um, a string, basically just prints it to the um, command line. And you can see it's actually vulnerable to you know, a trivial format string attack, basically. Oops, sorry about that. So this one liner basically is going to loop through the printf, um, you know, sending incremental values on the stack in order to see what's what's there basically. So what this is, this is the offset that I'm passing. This happens to be the string that I'm passing to printf. This is the, what printf returns to me, a code or stack pointer. And this is actually what that resolves to in terms of a string. So scrolling up, let's see if I can find where I'm looking for. You see that at about offset 138, sort of divided between offset 137 to 139, 
we have percentage $138 sign, which happens to be what I passed on the command line to printf. So here we've used knowledge of the exploit to basically find our string at offset 130, 137, 138. So we use that in a future step to sort of help exploit the program. The next thing we have to, the next thing we have to do, format string address. Now that we have the physical location on the stack, we want to find the pointer to that, um, to that string. Um, two ways to do this as well, um, a sequential loop as we did before, um, which will cause seg faults in the case of if the pointer at the given offset isn't actually a pointer but some data value, it's going to seg fault. Um, which might not be good in certain environments, for example, if, you know, on a pen test, if there's, you know, aggressive IDS systems. Um, the other way to do it, the more sneaky way is, given the stack dump, since we already have all that list, since we have a list of pointers already, we can parse that list for values that actually are, are on the stack and then just obtain the offsets from those values only. This avoids seg faults is a little bit more, um, you know, elegant and, you know, can get bought, allows us to basically dump all strings in just one run of the program, basically. So let me show you the, the first brute force method. Because it's a little bit more easy to run on the command line. How's it going, guys? Pretty good. Pretty good. We're tied. We're yeah. winning. Very good. <laughs> we do all the hard work. So, same thing, a loop here, basically. Um, one liner that's going to basically pass a bunch of things to the same printf function um, and try to get both the value as a pointer of the location as well as a string. So you can see here that, again, it's dumping offsets, showing, for example, what's the value, the pointer value, as well as the string that that pointer resolves to. So going back up a little bit, let's see if we can find it. So at offset 38, pointer uh, that ends with 608 actually references itself. Um, telling us that that pointer value actually resolves to our pass argument. Um, this is the second step of the, the attack, basically. So given this offset that we found in the first stack dump and the address that we found in the second, we basically have a method to allow arbitrary win on the stack. Um, we know that since offset 100 is at, for example, um, stack pointer BFFFF 100, and we know that a pointer is four bytes, we know, for example, that offset one is going to be minus 400 um, values from that offset, basically. So we have re a return address at offset 10. We can calculate the return or the stack offset of that. And then when we're attempting our exploit, we don't have to get, um, you know, for example, detours or program, program link table or some other overwrite location. We can just overwrite this location on the stack, which we've already found from a previous step. Um, even though it's possible, for example, in advanced format string attacks to sort of extract this information, we want to be sort of lazy and just have, you know, this operation from previous steps do our work for us. Um, you know, two methods to do this as well. Um, if we know what a return address looks like, um, they're pretty common on most, um, you know, Linux systems, we can use those. Or we can also guess them using sort of an algorithm that matches values that are close to each other that aren't data and aren't strings. Or we can also be lazy and just brute force everything on the stack until, you know, our, our exploit succeeds, basically, which is a lot easier to, to do, basically. Um, some issues with this new technique. Um, as I mentioned, if we change the length of our format string, it's basically in effect 
um, addresses on the stack. Since our format string basically, as it grows, so does so do stack values grow in addition to it. Um, the easy way to resolve this is basically to keep all format strings, um, you know, during the technique the same size. You know, just pad them with you know null characters or useless characters, so that when we actually attempt our exploit and append shell code to the format string, you know that will happen to be the same length as all our previous um, executions of the program. Um, the result of this is, you know, given two executions of a program, one to dump the stack, and two, if you're being really clever and just dumping all the string addresses, you basically can get all the information you need to exploit that um, function, basically. No brute forcing, just a little bit of math. Um, it's also nice because the way this current technique works, you can shrink the length of the format string so that you can fit both the format string and the shell code in, say, less than 100 bytes, which is usually pretty you know, re reasonable for you know, any user input field, basically. Um, however, if you don't brute force, the, brute force the override address or if you don't do some math, you still have to derive, the, derive it from some other source, such as you know, a core dump or you know, a known location like a program link table or the detours. So demo is a good, the good heart of the talk. Um, the first tool, which should be on your DEF CON CD, um, is a proof of concept tool in Python. Um, I have instructions for running on Backtrack 4. Um, basically, it's a nice little suite for demonstrating sort of the way the attack works. Um, you know, multiple options about where you want to overwrite, where you want to put your shell code. Um, again, since the proof of concept is missing some useful things, but um, you know, those can be really easily added, um, you know, hopefully by anyone who has an understanding of this talk. So I'll demo the tool right now. Um, you know, taking our same printf function that's we know to be vulnerable to format string attack. And you know, just for the sake of vulnerability sync, we'll make it uh, ownable and then ex executable by root. So you know, anyone will inherit those permissions. Um, I have a dummy account right now that doesn't have that has limited permissions. Um, obviously, I want to exploit this printf function. You know, gain root access. I don't want to actually have to do it to myself. So. Um, I'm going to basically use my tool. Um, sorry, that's a little hard to read, but basically it's just going over the options about you know, where you want the exploit to override and where you want the shell code to be. Um, but the nice thing is you don't really have to read any of that because you can just you know, click it with the, the binary and you're in, basically. So, and the nice thing is this technique works on any, you know, any similar, similar exploiting, you know, type of vulnerability, basically. The question was, would this work on a syslog thing where the output's going somewhere else? Um, this attack basically works as long as you can read the output from formal, former vulnerabilities and use those in new vulnerabilities, it's going to work basically. Uh, the next, next code I developed, especially for DEF CON, designed to be as loud and invasive as possible, um, has been completely automated. So I sort of removed that um, reference to having to get an overwrite location. I'm, I'm using basically brute forcing through the stack. Um, ported both to Python and Ruby. It's under 100 lines of code. So um, you know, hopefully if I have, a, have time, I'll go through it right now and um, you know, talk about it a little bit. Um, basically, it does the same thing except you know, using a brute force attack. So let me show you that as well. So again, same printf function. Um, 
same dummy user, different um, different binary. Um, so again, you just pass it the vulnerable function as a parameter, and you get a root shell. So. Um, even though you can't see it right now, for example, if I exit, you see right now it's it's actually brute forcing a bunch of you know spaces trying to go through all the um, stack values until it finds it. Um, so you know if as long as you know as long as it's there somewhere, you're going to get in. So if that's all that matters, you can be invasive as possible. I'll show show the um, Ruby version does the same thing, but for those who like Ruby better. You also can get a shell. Finally, the sort of the meat of this talk. Um, you know, if you're going to have this sweet program, you might as well port it where someone can use it. Um, in this case, I've decided to move it to Metasploit, um, add it for the capability for remote exploit. Um, the, build, the usefulness of this is that you know, you can use an arbitrary payload, anything from Metasploit. Um, you know, the code is there in Metasploit in a known location, so, you know, if you want to extend, you know, your functions for another vulnerability, you can just use Metasploit for it. Um, and for this, I created, you know, a, a sample vulnerable server that basically does the same thing, um, you know, as our printf vulnerable function, except, you know, through a TCP um, connection. So let me demo that right now. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go through this too much, but basically it it opens a port on four five four six. Um, you know, listens forks a process for you know step for connections, um, and then it basically sends you know SN printf vulnerability right here you know back to that socket that you um, you connected to. So let me make this and go ahead and run it. So this is running on my VMware. Um, I'm going to try to exploit it from my local Ubuntu machine. Metasploit's taking a while, don't worry. That's correct. This this assumes you know this is for kind of legacy environments where a lot of those protections are non-existent. So I'm well. Well, Metasploit's loading right now. I'll go ahead and just show you that it indeed basically just you know by by piping something through netcat to that um, server and through that port, it basically does the same thing. You know, gives sort of this um, you know data disclosure. How's it going, guys? Very good. Oh, these are my uh, my coworkers from Redspin, so they're here to play Mario Kart with me, basically. They don't have any any relation to the talk whatsoever. <laughs> okay, there we go. So right now I'm going to load my um, custom uh, Metasploit module. Um, show payloads. Let's see. What do I want to exploit today? Linux x86. I'm going to go ahead and just use a reverse TCP bind shell. See are my options for this. Looks like it accepts uh, 
remote host, remote port, local host. So I'm going to go ahead and set those. One third in this case is my VMware machine. And 58.1 is my local machine. Um, and hopefully this will, this will work. So the nice thing is since we're brute forcing um, the stack you know, any return address on that stack is going to give us a, a shell. In this case, it happens to be, uh, you know, six, six, you know, overwrite return addresses on the other program. So now you can shell or share a shell with your friends and family if you would so choose to. Um, and we can verify that by, you know, listing the sessions. and then send a command to them. So you can see that, you know, I compromised this application six times and, you know, got a root, you know, root access on all of them. <laughs> Looks like I'm doing really well on time, so I'm going to go through um, you know, my brute forcing code in Python. Um, hopefully you guys will get, out, get something out of it. It's only about 100 lines of code, um, four steps. So first thing I do basically is just, you know, standard, um, actually wrong one. I basically just have, you know, initialization, you know, setting up my uh, variables, defining some functions. Um, second step, I basically go through that stack dump process as I showed you before. Um, you know, I use this data basically to find, you know, an offset address um, of the found format string. The next step after that basically is, you know, I'm looking for that, the address of that format string. Um, so basically, I run another loop to find that address. And finally, when I'm actually exploiting, all I do is create the exploit string and then run through this brute forcing technique. So, you know, 68 lines of code, you know, hopefully pretty extendable, um, used on a variety of, you know, of similar instances. So hopefully you guys will find some use out of it. Uh, in conclusion, you know, format string output um, gives you any, everything you need to actually go from discovery to compromise. Um, you know, it can be completely automated as I've shown. Um, you know, they have been easy to fix. Now they're easy to exploit. Um, you know, for those who are interested in finding some of them, a good suggestion, Google code, a good dork to look for for, you know, this type of thing is um, shown there. This basically look for, um, a C language print type function, print F type function that doesn't begin with something like a constant, something that doesn't begin with something like stdin or stderr, or something that begins with a parenthesis. So hopefully something that is actually using you know a buffer, or a, um, you know a non non command line. All right, something that uses something that the user has provided in terms of a buffer, basically. So thanks. Um, hopefully the, the tools that aren't on your CD will be put on Redspin and DEF CON shortly, Monday, I'm hoping. Um, I'm hoping that the Metasploit module will also be there as soon as I talk to those responsible for weird auto format string stuff. Um, you can contact me. Otherwise, you know, shouts to all the people at Shellfish and my uh, people playing Mario Kart with me. Um, questions, Mario Kart, hopefully, looks like we have plenty of time, but hopefully we'll be in another room if you don't have any right now, so.
Can you can, can you repeat that one more time, please? So the question was, does my proof of concept uh, um, assume that there's direct parameter access to exploit it? And the answer is yes. So um, I basically assume that you know, most modern versions or most, most versions that I've seen have used that direct parameter access. Um, again, the technique can still be modified. Um, you just have to do it yourself. Um, I don't know, I think it would be a good exercise, but, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you could do it. Um, you know, because if you dump the stack enough times, you're still going to have a, a general idea about where stuff is relative to everything else on the stack. So, you know, you still could do some sort of permutation attacks. And if you're brute force in any way, you know, it's only a matter of time. Okay, guys, thanks a whole bunch.